hello students today let's learn here the concept of average and the application of the same in so many actual cat questions and a few more tough questions before we move on to the questions let's understand what all we are going to do in this session in this session we are going to cover a few basic and advanced concepts relating to average average is basically an act of balancing we will learn this through the application in so many questions uh, the concept of weighted average and its application then we are going to do some actual cat questions how can you make those questions as sitters and finally there will be a few practice questions and their answers for your extra practice now before we move on to the questions let's understand a few basic concept of average as you all shall be knowing average is basically calculated as sum of so many terms divided by number of terms in short this is what average is all about an important point relating to averages is that if the terms are at equal difference their middle term becomes the average let's take an example say you want to calculate the average of 12 24 36 48 and 60 as you can see there there are five terms now when there are five terms which term shall become the middle term in this case the middle term becomes the third term and which is the third term here students the third term is 36 which shall become your answer so the middle term becomes the average when the terms are at equal difference besides that another basic but very very relevant concept is if a constant term is added in all the terms the average increases by the same if the constant term is subtracted from all the terms the average decreases by the same similarly if you multiply all the terms by a constant the average also gets multiplied and the same goes with the division as well right students now let's move on to the questions where we will apply those concepts starting with the first question here just have a look at this question here you have the average temperature for 3 days again the average temperature for 3 days and out of those 3 days two days are common and one day is separate now students can we see here that earlier the average is 36.5 and now the average is 38.5 so there is an increase of 2 in the average so what can we assume can i say that 2 has been added in all the terms how many terms are there there are three terms so when you add 2 to monday tuesday and wednesday when three terms you add 2 what is the total addition can i say the total addition becomes 6 in this case now students there is an addition of 6 and the only uncommon day happens to be earlier there was monday and this time there is thursday right so this difference of this addition of 6 degrees has come because you have added thursday and you have excluded monday or the temperature on thursday is 6 more than monday now moving on the question states the temperature of monday is 6 by 7 of the temperature on thursday so students can i say here let the temperature on thursday be 7 so that the temperature on monday becomes 6 you can write x with that if you feel so and there is a difference of x in this case now as we discussed in actual sense what is the real difference between the two the real difference between the two is 
that is thursday is six more than monday so can we find the temperature on thursday students as a question asks us if x happens to be 6 what shall become the value of 7x it shall become 7 into 6 that is 42 right so this 42 becomes your answer students right now let's move to the next question in this question we will learn the concept of weighted average and its application how can you actually make the questions look very very simple and besides that we will learn what average is act of balancing how do you apply that uh, let's solve this question students here what you see that the number of teachers in every case is given to be 200 300 100 and so on so 100 we can take as redundant we can just ignore the value 100 and focus on the other points and he has given that the average of all the t-shirts we want is rupees 100 now let's do it by balancing the average as a question specifies is already given to be 100 now just focus on the first part there are 200 t-shirts at 99.7 so i'll take their number to be 2 and they are 0.30 less than the average so my net result is minus of 0.6 then there are 300 t-shirts which will take as 3 and they are 0.10 more than the average and our net result is positive 0.30 thirdly there are 100 t-shirts will take it as 1 with an price of 100.5 this is 0.50 more net result is 0.5 more only right now one t-shirt category number is missing but their rate is given to be 99.95 so can i say they are minus by 0.05 no students make sure firstly as the average was given to be 100 and we have taken that so net result has to become 0 now solving here negative 0.6 plus 0.3 plus 0.5 what you have to get here is a minus 0.20 whereas every term is minus 0.05 so how many terms are required students i think you all can understand you require four terms here and as we already ignored 100 which was a constant with all the terms four we will multiply by 100 to conclude that the number of t-shirts of this category shall become 400 now this 400 becomes your answer right students let's move on to the next question this one this is an actual cat question wherein you have taken 10 two digit numbers and their average is increasing by 1.08 so as i told you when there is an increase of 1.8 in the average we can say 1.8 has been added to the first term second term third term so on there are 10 terms so if you add 1.8 10 times there is a total addition of 18 and that is because you have just interchanged the two digits and students as you mathematically know if one number is 10x plus y and reversing will make it 10y plus x and if you take up the difference between the two it is equal to 9 times x minus y that simply means whatever is the difference in the digits 
nine times of that will be the difference in the numbers and we have already concluded in the numbers there is a difference of 18 so that means what will be the difference in case of digits it will be 2 and see carefully this is what your question is what is the value of b minus a so answer in this case will become this 2 right students it seems a very tough question but if you apply by way of balancing by the basic of average the question actually becomes very simple let's move on to the next question this one there's a cat 2006 question now four consecutive two digit odd numbers students if you take any consecutive two digit odd numbers say you take 11 13 15 and 17 you can very well conclude what will be their average it will be a number which will be exactly in the second and third term in between it will be 14 so first point to be concluded is that those four terms will have an average which is an even integer it has to be even and it has to be integer now when you divide it by 10 it becomes a perfect square students can i say the greatest two digit number is 99 so the numbers are less than equal to that and if you take four such numbers their sum has to be less than equal to 396 and mind it you are dividing it by 10 and it becomes a perfect square so when you divide it by 10 so that simply means its unit digit has to be 0 now let's just think about perfect squares which end with 0 and they are less than 396 that is a perfect square followed by a 0 and it has to be less than 400 so students will think about the numbers these are 10 40 90 16 0 25 0 and 36 0 now moving on we will solve this question by way of rejection if we have taken four consecutive odd two digit numbers their average will be an integer this means the total has to be divisible by 4 but what you see here the number 10 is not divisible number 90 is not divisible 250 is not divisible and it has to be even if you divide it by 4 the average comes out to be 10 the average comes out to be 40 and the average comes out to be 90 right now here if you take the average as 10 can you say two of the numbers have to be below 10 only but that is not possible so with that concept logic even 10 gets nullified now if 40 is the average can I say the terms will be plus 1 minus 1 plus 3 and minus 3 or if 90 is the average the terms will be here plus 1 minus 1 plus 3 minus 3 now students because we solve this question by way of concept now here the number has to be one out of these eight mind it the question is very tricky as you don't know the number is greatest smallest or somewhere in the middle so you need to find all and then you can answer but conceptually it becomes a real good question right students let's go to the next question okay now let's solve this question it's a lengthy question here see it says 10 years ago so we can say 10 years ago it was a family of eight people and they have a total age of 
231 years. So students, three years later, it is three years more than that or seven years ago from the present. Can I say all those eight people will be elder by three months or there will be a total of 24 years addition? Now what happens? An elderly person of 60 year dies and a child was born. Now here, plus 24 is due to this, but at the same time, a person of 60 gets expired and the child was born. So this means, what is the net addition of those two? It is a decrease of 36. Three more years later, or it is four years ago from the present, Again, the same scenario happens. So the all eight, including the child, will be elder by three years. So plus 24, another person of 60 dies, same process. What is the net result? Minus 36. Now what shall happen at present? Now, four more years, or we are talking exactly about the present scenario. Here, they all eight will be elder by four years or there is an addition of 32. Now students, what is the net result of all these activities? Minus 36, minus 36, plus 32. It is a decrease of 40 years. Now, earlier the total was 231. Now you subtracted 40 from this. The net result is 191 years is the total of eight people again, which tells you that their average is approximately 24 years. So this 24 becomes your answer. Right, students? Now here if you follow the process of x, then it happens, then it gets added, then subtracted. The question is going to take at least three to four minutes. Now if you solve it in this manner, I think you can solve the question very well within one minute. Let's move on to the next question. This one. Now here, this question is a very, very important question to learn the application of weighted average. Now students here, there are 125 boys and there are 250 girls. What you have to do is straight away, they have their average weight given, you want to find the average weight combined here, you just need to focus on that the ratio of boys and girls happens to be 1 is to 2. And your question is almost over. If there is one boy with a weight of 65 and there are two girls with an average weight of 50, now this total of 165 is the weight of three people. So what becomes their average? Their average becomes 55 years. So this 55 here becomes your answer students. Right? So by this method, we can just ignore using the values like 125, 250. Wheresoever you have a number, you have a group of numbers which are in a particular ratio, just ignore the larger values take their respective ratios. That way, you can make your calculations quite simple. Right, students? Let's move to the next question. This one. Now here, teacher has written all the consecutive natural numbers starting from 1. Up to how much is not given? Student erases and you have been given the new average. Now here, first thing you need to remember, whenever you take the average of 
n consecutive natural numbers starting from 1 their average is always n plus 1 by 2 so students this question how you're going to do is it's a very different approach we are going to apply but before we do that let me revise one more formula with you as i said average we all know is equal to sum of terms divided by number of terms here can i say whatever appears in the denominator it is either the number of terms or a factor of the same because if there is a common factor and you cancel that out the denominator will become a factor of the number of terms what i am hinting on is as in the given question it is 35 7 by 17 so the denominator has 17 this means the number of terms are a multiple of 17 that is the first hint to crack the question now besides that the average is given to be close to 35 now students as per the formula we learned here that average has to lie somewhere in the middle and it is given to be 35 can i say if 35 lies somewhere in the middle what is the number of terms whose average has been taken that is close to the twice of 35 which is 70 now the number of terms are close to 70 is the first hint that we have generated and it's a multiple of 17 is the second hint that we have generated can we club the two information students a multiple of 17 near to 70 the only and only possibility is 68 this means the average of 68 terms have been taken but the question talks about the numbers written on the board initially we know when the average is 68 terms is taken when one terms is erased the total number of terms before it was erased has to be 69 and 69 terms becomes your answer right students here if you want to calculate the number particularly which was erased that you can also calculate by applying the balancing thing which i explained earlier right students now let's move to the next question this one here students is quite a look alike of a actual cat question now here you have seven subjects and the marks are given to be in the ratio of 2 is to 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6 is to 7 is to 8. Can I say the terms are at equal difference? Yes. Now, which is the middle term here? The middle term is 5. So, can I safely take 5 to be their average? And students, be careful. The question says his overall marks are 60 percent so can i say 5 is equal to 60 percent and now the question tells you to compare for 75 percent and if you see carefully your question is almost over if 60 percent is 5 how much is 75 percent can we find that let's do it if 60% is 5, how much is 75%? You cancel this. You cancel 5. This is 4. It is 25 by 4 or 6.25. So students, here you can conclude that in terms of ratio, if in any subject he has 6.25 marks, that means he is scoring exactly 75. But you want to know more than 75? On how many cases the ratio given is more than 6.25? As you can see, there is 7 and there is 8. So how many subjects are there? 
there are two subjects so in two subjects he has scored more than 75% marks right students okay now let's go to the next question let's solve this question here let me first of all tell you here that this 34650 is actually redundant you don't need this information to answer what is important here is that on the way there is 40% of the items which get damaged now this 40% is very very crucial students this 40% is how much in terms of fractions we know 40% is equal to 2 by 5 so let's assume there are 5 items in total why i am choosing 5 because the denominator is 5 that way my calculations will actually become very simple now students there are 5 items as we assume so out of that two items were sold at a loss of 10% so what is the net result it is minus 20 how many items are left 3 now this is what we want to calculate but what is the net result net result is that on all the five items we want a profit of 20% or they have to produce a total of plus 100 and i can very well tell you here you all can do balancing net result you want is plus 100 here there is minus 20 so what has to be placed over here it has to be plus 120 over here right students so if here has to be plus 120 there are three items can we find here that the average profit will be equivalent to 120 divided by 3 how much is that that is 40% right students and this becomes your answer to the question is a wonderful way to reduce any kind of calculations to a very simple platform had it been he says 33 1 by 3 goods we know it is 1/3 would have taken the items to be 3 if he says he says 37.5% we know it is 3 by 8 we will take the total goods to be 8 and so on it has a universal application right students now let's move and do one more question this one it's a 45 people class their average age is given one boy leaves again you need to find the average on following 1st february it's a tough question if you do by way of one by one as a question is suggesting let's do this question and make it really simple in this case students 45 people their average is given to be 15 years and 4 months on 1st of june no one of them leaves in between let me first assume he does not leave so can i say that you want to calculate the average on 1st of february which appears after 8 months of 1st of june so everybody will be elder by 8 months or they will have an average of 16 years right students now had the person not left that group of 45 will have an average of 16 now the student actually leaves on 1st october now had it been in this group till date he would have been elder by 4 months october november december and january because we want average on 1st february can you say even he will be elder by 4 months 
his age is given to be let me write it here 16 years and 2 months on 1st October so on 1st February he will be 16 years and 6 months 4 month elder now students now I assume today he leaves today we are talking on 1st of February and he leaves wherein the average of the whole group is 16 years and the age of this fellow is 16 years and 6 months. Can I say he has those 6 months extra? Because he's a part of those 45 when he leaves then the 6 months that is extra which we can write as 180 days he will take equally among all the 45 people because he is also a part of those 45 those 6 months or 180 days will be taken equally from all the 45 students so everybody will contribute 4 days if everybody will contribute 4 days average will be less by 4 days then the 16 years which we have concluded if you subtract 4 days from that the answer shall become 15 years 11 months and 26 days right students if you do this question by following the proper method and channel the question actually becomes very very lengthy right that's it from our side i hope you all have learned whatever is being explained now there are a few practice questions for you in this case here is the first practice question one more and two more practice questions which you can solve at your end so that you are able to revise the concept, apply whatever you have learnt in this. These are the answers to these questions. I hope you all have enjoyed learning average and you will be able to apply that in the paper that you are going to take. Thank you so much. Happy learning.